Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? Meet Han Rubbard, your average College of Theater and Arts graduate, who recently found themselves out of a job, out of a house, and with a whopping zero dollars in their bank account after investing fairly heavily into some digital pictures of Gary Vee and Dave Ramsey. Word travels fast here in the town of Willow Creek, and because of that, no one seems too eager to hire this off-brand Skid Row resident. Faced with no other options, Han will have to live off of other people's scraps, watch media entertainment at an internet cafe, and find his own way to make money, slowly establishing himself as the richest man in town. In case you're already zoning out, one, get your shit together We're like 30 seconds into the video, and two, here's the layout. For this challenge, I'm starting off with zero dollars, zero land, and I'm incapable of finding a job. I'm basically roleplaying as Eddie from Christmas Vacation. The goal is to go from homeless bum to millionaire status. The challenge will end when either Han Rubbard passes away or purchases this luxurious mansion for the low, low price of 320,000 simoleons. With that, let's get into it. Well, this is our glorious estate. As you can see, it's fully furnished with every amenity you could ask for. As it turns out, all those online courses teaching you how to get rich just haven't panned out for him yet, leaving him with a cash balance of zero. Han does still have a cell phone though, so we're not totally cut out from the outside world. Since we have nothing on our property, we'll have to handle our needs in a more nomadic approach. Luckily for Han Rubbard, Magnolia Blossom Park has everything we need. It's got benches to nap on, a pond to fish at, grills to cook at, and toilets and sinks for our personal hygiene. We can even play chess with the locals to keep our social battery well charged. Sure, life as a hobo isn't exactly glamorous, but there's a sense of freedom that comes with it. Since it costs money to cook food on the grill, we'll either need to earn some simoleons on our own or find some food. Initially, I started with fishing under the assumption that I could cook whatever I caught. However, I was sorely mistaken. Since I can't cook the fish, I sold it for a whopping seven simoleons. I'll need to catch at least one more before I can start grilling out, but we'll worry about that later. Now is the time for exploration, and the next stop on the list is the library. It's got bathrooms, bookshelves, and most importantly, computers. Here is where we'll make our money. It's a social gathering for nerds and outcasts in the form of an off-brand internet cafe, and I intend to take full advantage of this place. Computers unlock a plethora of ways to make money. We can become dank hackermans, participate in esports tournaments, create our own NFT scams like all the famous influencers. And if we feel like being particularly boring, we can even write books. All for free, I might add. On to the gym. Aside from keeping us sexy for the gram, the gym gives us something that no other place offers. A shower. If we're going to take the neckbeard fantasy enthusiast approach, a shower is vital. I mean, have you ever walked past a GameStop before? How are we supposed to become rich and famous if we smell like we're coming off a six-day League of Legends LAN party? With that, let's head back home and get ourselves situated. No one at the park seems to notice that I live here, which is great for us. Honestly, the biggest challenge I can see us facing isn't even the survival aspect, it's just keeping the social meter up enough for us to not become completely introverted. Also, what the fuck is going on with this lady? Look at that RBF, she's out for blood. And then behind her is just some liberal arts major going for a jog in her pink sweater. God, I love the Sims. In the afternoon, Han Rubbard made an attempt to get some of the locals on board with his new NFT pet collectible mobile game. The only problem? Well, most of the people in the group are above the age of seven and can smell the scam from across the park. With our first day coming to a close, I turn my attention back to fishing. Han's starting to get hungry, so we'll need to catch another fish or two and sell them before we can cook some hot dogs for 13 simoleons. Lucky for us, we caught a fish and a piece of metal, selling both for a total of $45 before turning around and cooking our first meal. A massive plate of hot dogs. One of my favorite things about The Sims is that you can just put food in your pockets. Like, he's got a dozen hot dogs, right? And he just shoves them in his pockets like that scene from Napoleon Dynamite where he crams the tater tots in his pants. I like to imagine that a random passerby saw this and was just like, man, that guy's a f***ing psycho. With his pockets loaded of hot dogs, mustard, and ketchup, Han Rubbard returned to the library. I figured if I just don't leave, they won't kick me out and I can pass the time in here and even sleep on the little benches they have. There's also a ton of things to do in the library. We can read some books for fun, or learn some new skills and recipes. And if that ever gets boring, we can always turn to video games, which is exactly what Han Rubber did. Some might say this is where he discovered his passion for science fiction. There's something about causing natural disasters and alien invasions to decimate major cities that's just so enticing.
When it came time to sleep, I found this nice little couch bench thing and rested there. Just watch how annoyed the librarian is. This poor lady just wants to go home, but instead she's just watched some homeless dude come in, play video games for like three hours, and then pass out on her couch. After waking up the next morning, I pulled one more hot dog out of my pants and shoved it down my throat before the rest went bad. With that, let's get started on day two. And what better way to start than with some social interaction? Naturally, living the life of a hobo means you don't have many friends. If only there was a place you could hide your identity and become anything you wanted. Well, luckily for Han, Reddit exists in the Simsverse. He may only have 32 simoleons to his name, but what if I told you that Han Rubbard has an astonishing 420,069 Reddit karma and is a self-proclaimed expert in all conspiracy theories? Just try to keep your pants on, ladies. I will say, the gym seems to have way better couches, so I'll probably end up crashing here most nights. With that, it's time to start settling into a routine, so after taking a nap on the couch, I hopped in the shower and then walked back to the park to make some more food. With the whole batch of burgers in his pants, it's back to the library for a day of elo grinding. Hopefully, we'll be out of silver soon. Once he realized that The Sims has no elo to grind, Han turned to reading, grabbing one of the science fiction books off the shelves and settling into a nearby bench. As it turns out, this would unlock a hidden passion that Han didn't even know existed within him. Through the past days of playing video games and reading science fiction, he'd uncovered a love for storytelling, and with this newfound passion, Han would unlock the catalyst needed to propel him into superstardom. But we'll start on that in the morning. For now, we rest on the gym couch. That was, until he was kicked out of the gym and forced to sleep on the park bench. Evidently, nothing breeds creativity like deep poverty, and we woke up with a newfound sense of inspiration. If he could just sit down and write his story, he was sure it would be a hit. With that, it's back to the library to practice typing words into Google Docs. It must be going well though, I mean, just listen to him. When Han wasn't refining his writing skills, he studied the art of comma placement and when to use the correct there. There's three of them there, and they're all correctly laid out in their own respective placements. Now, did I use that as an excuse to use all three theirs? Yes, I did. Seriously, guys, it's, it's not that hard. The one with the two E's is location, like over there. The one with the apostrophe is they are, and the one with the I is in regards to an object belonging to something, like it's their book. All right, grammar lesson over, back to Hobo Simulator. It took less than a day for Han to reach level 3 in writing, after which he started on his first book, Tall Tales for Short Adults, a book about midgets, having been inspired by an episode of Little People Big World. Hey, I mean, if the Learning Channel can make money off of them, why can't we? Unfortunately, we need food, as we're currently suffering from a hunger that Tales of Oompa Loompas cannot satiate. You know what can stifle this hunger? Hot dogs. After shoving his face and giving himself a pep talk in the public bathroom, it was back to writing. We have a whopping two dollars to our names, but we're still inspired and in good spirits, so it's back to writing. Now, some people might say there's a moral quandary over writing a book about little people as an average height person. Like, maybe it's low-hanging fruit to go after the little guy, so to speak. And to that, my editor says, to be fair, to be very literal, they are quite low to the ground. So maybe think about that next time you decide to make a low-hanging fruit joke, you bigot. Also, pause real quick. For any of you dorks actually getting offended over this premise, I'm sure there's at least one of you, relax. It's not that deep. It's not serious. If you need credentials, my editor is a literal cripple and I'm autistic, so maybe don't throw any stones at him and consider the fact that I struggle to maintain eye contact and maybe do some self-reflection before you actively suppress the ha-ha comments on a video about the f***ing sims. Also, this video gets so much worse. We haven't even started on the Scientology jokes yet, so buckle up, buckaroos. Anyway, it's back to the library for some intense writing and short jokes. That being said, it can be difficult to write a book when you're constantly distracted by random citizens trying to strike up a conversation with you. Seriously though, why are there so many people here? This is a library. And on top of that, aren't you supposed to like shut the f up at libraries? Like, isn't that the whole premise? You're supposed to be quiet and go about your business? Seems a little weird to me that all these sims see good old Han Rubbard writing his midget manifesto and all decide now seems like the best possible time to discuss cars and current events. Even with all the distractions, Han Rubbard finished his first book in one day. Since no one's heard of him before, he'll have to self-publish his book, but we'll worry about that in the morning. For tonight, we celebrate by sleeping on park benches and dreaming of fame and success.
Since we don't have any means to distribute the book, we took a simpler approach and just shoved it into someone's mailbox, hoping that it'd get to the publishing people place or however that all works. With his first book officially out of his hands, we took a moment to celebrate by posting a selfie to our social media timeline, earning a whole 12 followers. All he needs to do now is put TTV in his name the next time he hops on Call of Duty and he'll be a superstar before we know it. That being said, we still only have two simoleons in our bank account and it's gonna take some time before we start earning royalties on our TLC spin-off novel. So in the meantime, it's back to fishing. There's something about this pond that I can't quite figure out. Mainly how I'm able to catch whole ass salmon in this thing. With that major catch and some more plumbing parts, we're up to $72, but there's gotta be other ways to make some cash while we wait. I vaguely remember watching the movie Holes like 500 times as a kid, so you can kinda guess where they were going with this when I found a patch of dirt and an option to dig. Selling the upgrade parts gave me another $20 and an overwhelming urge to go dig up some more shit. All that digging helped to pass the time, but I figured another good way to get my mind off the book was to go work out, so I did just that. Don't ask why his workout clothes make him look like a SoundCloud rapper, it's just what the default was and I forgot to change it. With the workout completed, Han took his 84 simoleons over to the nightclub to celebrate the publishing of his first book, where he discovered that the chips at the bar are free. This part made me laugh a bit because it reminded me a ton of those memes where you see the dude like shouting into the chick's ear about something she's completely disinterested in. In this case, it's Han Rubbard telling everyone at the nightclub about his book about midgets while everyone is just trying to have a good time and dance, and he just can't pick up on any social cues. Also, I'm pretty sure the nightclub music is copyrighted, so if you're hearing the Wii theme song, that's why. After retiring from the nightclub scene at the late hours of 6pm, I stepped out back to find a snapdragon plant. Harvesting the plant allows me to sell the snapdragons for 160 simoleons, giving us the most cash we've ever had before. Even with that influx though, we're still sleeping on park benches. After a quick snooze, Han woke up determined to improve his living situation. He returned to his empty lot and found a nice little spot to fish, managing to catch another salmon. Settling that salmon gave us enough cash to purchase our first bed. It may just be a cot, but it's a hundred times better than any park bench. With that, Han climbed in, and for the first time this playthrough, slept through the night on something other than a wooden bench. So we have a bed now, but currently we're still relying on the park and gym for our other amenities. While prepping for the day, we received our first royalty check for our published story. A whopping three simoleons. Not exactly millionaire status, but at least people are buying the book. Let's see what they have to say about it. Oh, oh god they hate it. Turns out maybe centering your first ever book on the topic of midgets isn't the smartest play. With nothing better to do with his time, Han spent most of the morning sitting on Reddit angrily responding to any criticism he could find on the Little People subreddit. After rage dumping on the internet for several hours, Han rubbed his eyes and turned his anger into inspiration, starting on his second book, Ancient Aliens, A Myth, or Fact? The grind stops for no one, even if every sim in the city decided today of all days to visit the library and ask Han Rubber what he was up to. Sadly, even Han the incel is no match for redheads in short skirts, and found himself spending more time talking to her about doing his own research than focusing on his book. Even with all that though, he managed to spit out this pile of dog shit in an afternoon, completing his second story. By this point, the library had started to quiet down as everyone went home to their families and loved ones, leaving Han in peace and quiet. He took this time to continue practicing writing. Now you'd think he'd practice during the day and write in the evenings when he was free of distractions, but that'd be silly. Also, he didn't even really practice, he was too busy raiding with his guild in World of Simcraft. After waking up the next morning, we got some fishing in and even managed to catch a trout. Selling that allowed us to make some chicken skewers to get the day started on the right foot. Immediately after eating, I noticed some lily flowers behind the picnic table, which I was able to sell for 360 simoleons. To try and take advantage of such a perfect start to the day, we headed back to the library to begin working on our first poetry book, The Bird is the Word. Now, many say this entire book is comprised of mostly Lil Wayne lyrics, but to them I say, if cough syrup can't kill him, who can? Now, I don't mean to brag, but we're making a whole $7 off of royalties at this point. Everyone step aside, the new JK Rowling is here. Only instead of the turf scandals, we just can't stop talking about conspiracy theories and how ancient aliens actually created the little people. 
Much like any other tortured artist, Hans began turning to booze to fuel his creative needs. His drink of choice? A salty llama. Which kinda sounds like something you'd do at an upside down pineapple party, but I'm not gonna judge. I apologize, there's a whole lot of T for teen jokes in this E for everyone game, but we've got like 40 more minutes to go or something like that, so just hang in there. Now that we're nice and boozed up, it's back to writing our epic poetry book. We managed to hit writing level 5, which is super important because that means we can sell to an actual publisher now instead of just cramming our books into the neighbor's mailbox and hoping they reach their target audience. <laughs> the following morning, we started off with the signature John Daly breakfast of cheeseburgers and cigarettes before collecting and selling lilies to fund the first few walls of our soon-to-be home. Funny enough, there's actually a community garden like right next to my plot of land, meaning we can just go over there and forage all of the plants, which may or may not be exactly what I did. During this gardening escapade, I received my royalty check, which is now up to 42 simoleons per day, with 35 of those hard-earned dollars coming from my poetry book. Now it's time to get rid of those half walls and build our first home. It may not be much, but it's got four walls, a bed, a toilet, a shower, and a computer. What more could anyone ask for? The entire time I was making this small box, I just kept thinking of those Twitter memes where they're like, write my setup, and it's just a living room with a TV and an Xbox with a little chair next to it, and all the dudes are in there gassing it up, and all the non-gamers are just so confused how people could just be happy with that. Anyway, a new home means new book. We've got a place to call our own for once, and we don't have to rely on going to the library every day or going to the gym to shower. With that, Han figured now would be a fantastic time to start on a non-fiction story based on his life so far. Now free from all distractions, Han was able to pound out this bad boy in an afternoon. You do really take this kind of stuff for granted though. It's so much more efficient to work from home like this where I can just walk to the mailbox and publish the book instead of having to go through loading screens and all that junk. The only downside? Well, we now have unsolicited visitors. It's not every day you go from hobo to homeowner, and for some reason that story seems to resonate heavily with the hippie community. Fortunately for us, he left after we explained that this is not in fact Skid Row, despite what it may look like on the outside. Honestly, the best part of living here isn't even the freedom that comes with writing. It's the fact that I can end each day with a foraging run, which nets me about 1,200 simoleons per day if I keep it up. It's way more than I've earned from any book, so it's kind of taking over as my main income while writing serves as more of a passive income approach. Since I don't have a fridge, I've started relying on pizzas as my primary food source. Given the last poetry book is outperforming all my other shit combined, it was only fitting that we start on a second one. Much like with YouTube, the moment you have success in anything, simply beat it into the dirt and repeat the process until you've milked every penny and sucked all the joy and creativity out of it. During this process, we're slowly building out the tiny home by adding a sink and garbage can. We also hit writing level 6, but that doesn't really matter right now. By that morning, Han had finished his second poetry book. It's worth noting that this is the first excellent quality book that we've written so far, so I'm expecting a decent payout. While waiting on the results from the previous two books, Han started on a confidence book. The goal here is to leverage my budding fame and use that to create a course on how to become the Sims version of Andrew Tate. Similar to how Ninja made that whole course on how to become a streamer that Drew Gooden took and it ruined his life. Anyway, the royalty report came in and we're making almost $300 a day off of our books. 
Granted, 160 of those dollars is coming from our newest poetry book, but still, not a bad haul by any means. Reject women, focus on the grind. All right, the confidence book is done. Another excellent quality banger. Cannot wait for all the 12 year olds to find their parents' credit cards. While we wait for that, it's time to order another pizza and start on a Stephen King-esque short stories book. Uh -huh. Level 7 writing means we can now write religious text, which is a big step up for us. Other than that, Han finished his short stories collection, marking yet another excellent quality book ready for publication, before promptly passing out on the floor. Funny story here, this is exactly how my daughter sleeps. Like, she just curls herself up in a ball in the corner of her crib and just sticks her ass straight up in the air. I have no idea how it's comfortable for her at all, but it's the most hilarious shit to see when you check the baby monitor at like 4am and just see her exactly like this. With that though, it's time to finally upgrade our bed. This cot has served us well, but we have some cash now, so why not upgrade? With a good night's sleep under our belt, we got started on the first piece of a fantasy literature. Shout out if you caught the reference, and if you didn't and are now googling the title of the book, you might as well like the video and admit you got got. Anyway, our daily royalties are now up over 500 simoleons per day, so we're actually starting to rake in some serious cash throughout the week. I also really like how the degradation of Ron Hubbard has commenced over the past few days, and how he's basically gone from proper hygiene to transforming into the Sims version of Asmongold. Just living in garbage and shit while terminally online. You know, seeing the results, maybe Hubbard was onto something after all. I mean, the moment we started copying him, boom, bestseller. Seeing the success of the first book, it only made sense to continue down the path and try another. Alright, I don't expect anyone to get this one, so if you do happen to catch this reference, you're weird, go outside. It's always nice to step away and take breaks from writing every once in a while. And Han Rubbard found that with Nancy. I'm not sure why, but there's just something about her that's so hugely likable. The self-help book we finished was excellent quality, so it was a step down from the science fiction book, but still a hit across the board. Alright, alright. For the script notes for this, I just wrote, Gay Walk. So here's Han Rubbard walking to a mailbox. It's no secret that Han Rubbard has put on some weight. Like, look at this fatty fat f This is what happens when you stop exercising and rely on nothing but pizza for your meals. The sacrifices that need to be made for success. Such a burden. Better stifle that pain by ordering some Sim Dash. I'm glad to see the prices are accurate in the game, though. With the newest royalty report, we're making over 700 simoleons per day. But that's not what this scene is for. Why the f is the Dasher just hanging out in my house after delivering my food? Like, I took the bag from her, and she just invited herself in, sat at the desk, and is having a full-blown conversation with me while I eat the food she just brought. Like, go home, or go accept another delivery. What are you doing? Time is money. After kicking her back to the curb, Han started on a follow-up to his fan-favorite Ancient Aliens book. This one was a sequel. Evidently, he was cooking too hard and blue-screened after several hours of writing. The likely cause was that there was a virus, and he was trying to delete the virus, and then his pants fell down because it was so hot because he was trying to get rid of the virus. Mr. Editor Mans, can you please, please put that clip in? If it doesn't get copyrighted, please and thank you. No, I, I was searching around the... Mom. Mom. I was searching around the internet, and all of a sudden, I, I was downloading this thing, and I got a computer virus, and when I was getting out of my chair... After using his magical powers of turning it off and on again, we were back in business, though I will admit, Han was incredibly distracted from the fiasco and produced some mediocre, normal quality shit. It's time to move up in the world though. Anyone can write a book. Only real artists can pull off a screenplay. With that in mind, Han began work on his first ever screenplay, Symbius. A story heavily inspired from the hit movie, Morbius. That's right folks, it's Simbin time. During this moment, we hit writing level 8, which means we can now write science fiction novels, something I'm personally excited to get into. The screenplay was finished within a day. Han Rubbard literally wrote a movie in a day. And it was excellent quality, as to be expected. I mean, it's written after one of the most successful movies of all time. How could it be anything less than excellent? With that off to the publisher, it's time to start on our first sci-fi book. 
Hans got four hours to get this thing done in order to collect same day royalties on it, so he got to work. A few hours later, I noticed I had some unspent aspiration points, so I spent 2000 on the Creative Visionary Boost, which should help Han write higher quality books with less effort. After all of that, normal quality. Maybe we're not meant for science fiction books, but hey, you can't win them all. That being said, our screenplay, Symbius, was a smashing success. It's currently earning us over 400 simoleons per day in royalties, so safe to say it'll be turning our attention towards crafting several sequels. I think changing up the scenery will help as well, so after about a week of living in the shadows like that dude from the Benchwarmers who's scared of the sun, Han Rubbard stepped back outside and set off for the library. It would be here that he'd start work on his second screenplay. The library is a fantastic place to bounce ideas off of complete strangers, and what better advice to take than that of a child? Clearly the gamble paid off, with another excellent screenplay completed, Han gave Sci-Fi another shot, starting his second book in that genre, only this time he'd spice it up a bit and focus more on the ancient religious texts of his people. On that note, it's back to continuing the trend of sim-dashing food and spending entire days completely isolated from society. I gotta say though, the Scientology books seem to be struggling quality-wise. Maybe the source material just isn't good enough or reliable enough to build on. You know what is good enough to continue though? What's that saying? Third time's the charm? Well, it looks like that holds true for movies as well, since Symbius 3 was a bestseller across the board. Better yet, we can submit it to the Literary Digest for a chance at an absolutely massive payout. Outside of that, the Symptology series continuously underperforms, so I think it may be time to move on from the cult and start something new. On the bright side, we're making over 3k per day in royalties. If we just do nothing for a hundred more days, we'll be able to afford that mansion across town. I will say, I am getting a bit tired of constantly writing novels though. We've almost maxed the writing skill and it's just starting to get stale, so I took a break for a day to see how much money I can make from foraging. By the end of the day, I'd managed to rake in over 4,500 simoleons from just walking around picking plants. I was still pretty awake at this point, so I spent most of the night working on a children's book about freeze tag, finishing it early the next morning. Since it's a bestseller, I'm going to hold off on submitting it for now and hand it over to the Literary Digest since it can be done once per week. All right. It's been a few weeks of living on this concrete box, and we've saved up some cash, so it might be time to upgrade. There's a house nearby that I can buy for pretty cheap. If I take my furniture with me, I'll be able to move in with a little over 6k in my bank, so I did just that. Even with my old furniture, I still needed to build out a kitchen and some other furnishings to make the house feel more like a home. Here's what we're working with right now. Got a nice little bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen. The living room is really just for the desk and computer, so I can work here, but the kitchen has some added amenities, namely a fridge, a stove, and a coffee machine, something that's been missing from Han Rubbard's life. Even with my old furniture, I still needed to build out a kitchen and some other furnishings to make the house feel more like a home. Here's what we're working with right now. Got a nice little bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen. 
The living room is really just for the desk and computer, so I can work here, but the kitchen has some added amenities. Namely, a fridge, a stove, and a coffee machine. Something that's been missing from Han Rubbard's life. Now that we're fully moved into the new place, it's time to grind. After making his first home-cooked meal ever, Han settled into his desk chair and pumped out an excellent quality fantasy novel before starting on another screenplay. The goal is to see just how much I can write over the weekend before we kind of sunset writing for a bit and move on to other skills. There's certainly more than one way to make money without holding down an adult job in The Sims, and I want to explore some of those options. Before we get to that though, it's only right that we max out the writing skill, cementing Han Rubbert as a literary genius. Anyway, we finished another excellent screenplay and followed that up with an excellent quality self-help book for all the middle-aged dads out there going through a midlife crisis. I submitted three of the excellent quality books to the publisher, and with that, we're up to just under 4k per day in royalties. With the checks rolling in, it's time to get our life back on track. One thing we've been severely neglecting is our physical health. To fix that, we're heading back to the gym. I even brought Nancy along for, uh, moral support. This place is strange. Like, you've got guys just full on stretching while running on the treadmill, and then you've got this. Bro just realized Nancy was in the gym and his double take almost ended his running career. I do want to find another way to make some money though. Obviously this is pure vanilla, so no DLCs or anything like that, which is significantly limiting our abilities. What I'm trying to say is it's hard to rake in the millions when you're not working with the Sims 4 OnlyFans DLC. Honestly, gardening may just be the way to go. It seems simple enough to stack up as long as I can just get the right crops to go with. With that though, it's still Sunday, which means we still have stories to write. And what better time than now to try out a biography. Apparently Han was typing too hard and bricked one of the library computers. After doing so, he did the right thing and avoided blame by moving to another computer and pretending like nothing happened. The next morning, we got the day started with some inspiring pancakes like a true American before sitting back at the desk and finishing the biography. It's normal quality, which was a bummer, but oh well. On to new adventures. With the books earning me thousands of simoleons per day, I took advantage of the wealth I'd garnered and spent a few thousand on plots to begin gardening. Even after moving across town, we were lucky enough to find another communal garden just across the street from us. Inside the enclosure are snapdragon plants that we can replant in Han Rubbard's personal garden. That being said, I did fuck up the plots and had to spend several minutes moving them around so that I could reach all four spots on the individual plot. There's no option to plant all of these guys at once either, so I had to manually click each plot and add four snapdragons apiece, which took forever. By the time I'd finished, I was 12 short of filling all my plots. It's no big deal though, wild plants seem to regrow daily, so I can just head out tomorrow and grab the rest to plant here. The following morning, Han researched snapdragon plants, watered all of them, made breakfast, and then headed over to the library for some social interaction. The best thing about the library for us is the fact that you can do something like write a screenplay while conversing with some of the locals hanging out in the area. Basically, you can work while boosting your social skill at no penalty. Being the menace that he is though, Han BYOD'd another library computer, so he just spent the rest of the day hanging out with everyone. He did manage to finish the screenplay, but it wasn't nearly as well written as his previous work. The next morning, after getting ready for the day, Mr. Rubbard purchased a workbench in an attempt to become more appealing to the blue collar community. For these sculptures, they cost $10 for the material, but can be sold for $20, making them a nice little side gig. In the afternoon, we hit up the river behind our house and got some fishing in. Even with no bait, fishing seems to be way more lucrative at face value than the workbench. Though I'd imagine the workbench has way higher payouts at higher levels as you continue to craft more advanced items. 
That evening, while working on another novel, Han Robert BYOD'd his new desktop. This time, however, he took a shot at repairing it for himself and was able to successfully get everything up and running without issue. I remember back in The Sims 2, there was that chance of electrocuting yourself and killing your character from it. I'm not sure if that exists in The Sims 4, but I just remember always being terrified to work on things like my oven and fridge on the off chance I killed my character before I got around to building the swimming pools. Alright, looks like our plants are ready for harvest. Let's see what we can do. Each plot sells for 640 simoleons. I currently have 10 plots full, so with all of those, and taking into account my daily royalty checks, we're currently hauling in over 10,000 simoleons per day. To continue our expansion, I harvested some more snap berries and used those to add to the vacant plots, giving me 12 more plants to work with. I also tested with fertilizing one of the snapdragon plants with some of the extra seeds. It looks to have worked since the quality jumped up slightly. Oh, you can also talk to the plants like the goth kids from South Park, which does boost your social meter, but is admittedly very strange. By the time I'd finished up in the garden, it was around 9pm, but Han Rubbard was in a focused and inspired mood and I wanted to take advantage of that. So at around 9.30 on a Thursday night, Han Rubbard sat down at his desk and began working on Symbius 4, The Return of Symbius. Naturally, anything associated with the storied franchise is excellent at worst and a bestseller at its peak. Since I'm currently sitting on two other bestsellers, it didn't really matter what this ended up as, so I was perfectly happy to take another excellent quality movie and slap that on Han's IMDb page. The next morning, I gave the book of poems over to the Digest and submitted the freeze tag bestseller along with a screenplay to the publishing company instead of waiting for another week to pass. After that was taken care of, it's time to harvest my plants again. The goal is to reach level 8 gardening so that we can super sell all the crops, whatever the f that means. In the meantime though, it's taking the better part of an entire day to tend all these plants. I'm considering hiring a gardener, but we'll have to see. I don't see a reason to hire one if they're going to cost like a thousand sims a day, but if they're only like 200 simoleons, it'd make much more sense considering how much time I'd free up for myself. I know I literally just said it takes almost a day to tend to all these things, but more plots means more crops, and more crops means more money, so it's really stupid for me to not keep adding if you think about it. Anyway, my routine looks something like this. Wake up, shower, eat, write a book, spend the rest of the day working on the garden. During this grind, I achieved my aspiration of becoming a best-selling author, an achievement that usually takes most sims their entire lives to even come close to. To celebrate, I spent my aspiration points on independent and marketable. A gardener costs $50 plus an additional $30 per hour spent here, so I want to see how long it takes them to get in the day's work and then we'll figure out if this is a long term thing or not. With a day's work taken care of, Han returned to his desk and began working on The Book of Life. This is a one time selling book that has some sentimental value to Han so I only wanted to work on it while he was focused and with multiple Moodles boosting that for him. This way, I'd have the highest chance to write a bestseller. With that, I want to hold onto it and submit it to the Digest for the largest possible payout. With the Book of Life completed, I spent the rest of the day harvesting, weeding, and treating my Snapdragon plants since I completely forgot that the Gardener only shows up on weekdays and it's currently Saturday. On the off chance I had any actual time to work on other projects, I would sculpt a statue or two at the workbench before getting back to my duties. Oh, I also got tired of looking at this fat slob, so I bought him a treadmill. We'll see if he has the willpower to fix himself, but he's got the tools to succeed. I mean, worst case, we'll just throw him on Ozempic like every other American and he can just pretend to lose weight for a few years before inevitably gaining it all back when he stops taking it. Anyway, happy Monday. The gardener finally showed up for their first day of work, so I let them do their thing and wrote another bestseller in the meantime. In total, it cost me 187 simoleons for the gardener. The only downside with her is that she doesn't harvest any of the plants, so we'll still have to do that every morning. Regardless, I can live with that. This should give me a ton of extra time during the week, so I can spend a few grand on some skill books and magazines to help me get ahead in some tinkering, gardening, and fitness.
After selling all the other best sellers, we're making over 6k a day in royalties, meaning we're bringing in close to 15,000 simoleons daily after factoring in the gardening. We're getting real close to that 100k mark, which is a massive accomplishment considering at the start of the video, we were literally sleeping on park benches with zero dollars to our name. Another concept I've been running with is that whenever Han Robert is in a playful mood, I'll just start him on writing children's books. I found that whenever he's in a playful mood, the children's books tend to be bestsellers. And just like that, we're officially over the 100k mark. Only 200k more to go. We've also reached that point where almost every book I write is a bestseller, so that's really cool to see. With that, I submitted the Book of Life to the Literary Digest. I have no idea how it'll do though since I've written so many books that they don't even all show up on the royalty report anymore, which has gotta be a crazy flex to be like, I've written and published so many books that not even all the names show up on the report. George R.R. R. Martin could never. Well, it's Han Rubbard's birthday today, and if you look back at everything, he's got all this success and, well, no one to share it with. Now originally, I gave myself a personal goal to try and purchase the mansion before his birthday, but it doesn't look like that'll be possible considering I still need over 100k to afford it. Han celebrated his birthday with his plants, and spent the evening socializing with them, which has gotta be the saddest f***ing sight for any passerbys to witness. On the bright side, he can supercell the harvest now, so happy birthday to Han, I guess? Alright, superselling is very clearly the way to go. It basically just bulk sells all of your crops within a certain radius. This saves me several hours per day, and I can now spend those on other hobbies, since I'm close to maxing out the gardening skill. I still need about 80k, so it's only a matter of time, but I'd like to speed that up as much as possible. Especially after having a near-death experience while fixing the fridge. Death is around the corner, and it's something that comes for everyone. Yeah, didn't think we were gonna get all existential in a fucking Sims video, did ya? You know what helps people cope with death? Writing about it. And being an award-winning, best-selling author that he was, that's what Han did. He wrote about death, both as a coping mechanism and because it's what he loved to do. And if we're all gonna go one day, we might as well go out doing what we love. Alright, now that about 20% of you are having panic attacks, I can show you that we were able to evolve some of our plants like fucking Pokemon. I have absolutely no idea what it does, but it did boost the quality ever so slightly, so it must be a good thing. The workbench thing isn't really for me though, so I purchased an easel, threw on some Bob Ross, and started learning how to paint. Oh, and during that period of purchasing all the art supplies and tablets, Han Rubber maxed his gardening skill, giving us two fully maxed skills in this run. Just look at S. Han Rubber, such an inspiration. Starting from a writer, getting super into plants, and then becoming Bob Ross Jr. From my understanding, the tablet allows you to make art at double the speed, but I like watching the paintings come together because I'm old school and used to grinding paintings from The Sims 2. I want you guys to know, this is exactly how I look when I'm working on thumbnails. Like I sit there with my little tablet in the middle of the living room, all hunched over with the dog and the cats and my daughter just staring at me like, what the fuck is he doing? And it's just me photoshopping massive boobs onto my pawn with doing the soy jack face. Anyway, I found out pretty early on you can do reference paintings, so I did a real artsy one and took a picture of a coffee pot to draw. What's mind blowing to me is that someone actually bought this shit. Like a sim looked at this painting and went, I have to have this in my dining room. And it's just like a shitty coffee pot that someone drew with a box of Crayola crayons. After a few days of constant painting, I started getting this thing down. Hell, I even sold the painting for just under 1k. And not just once, but two separate times. Come to think of it, S. Han Rubbard's gotta be the most artistic or autistic man I've ever encountered. Just hyper fixated on three separate skills all enough to completely master them and become insanely successful in all three facets. Just insane levels of focus and grind, and I'm here for it. All it took was one final harvest, and with that, we're ready to purchase this luxurious mansion. Now, I don't want to brag, but I did redo the exterior flooring and added in some pretty sweet features like 70 inch flat screen TVs in all the rooms, along with a hot tub and a pool and a pretty sweet grill. This is where S. Ron Hubbard has settled into retirement, a fitting home for a hardworking juggernaut. And with a new home, it's time for a new wardrobe. God, he looks like a PC principal just got gifted a mansion. This man does not fit in here, but I mean, he is the one who bought it. 
It's been an incredible journey, but just a few short months ago, Han Rubbard was just living off of hot dogs crammed into his pants, sleeping on park benches, and showering at the local gym. To go from absolute bum to Mr. Squilliam Fancyson has been a ton of fun to play through. If you're unaware, Scientology hard translates and watches literally all content made about them, so the chances of someone from that cult actually watching this video is higher than 0%, which I think is hilarious. And if you are one of those psychos who's been forced to watch and transcribe this, eat shit and have a very merry day knowing that your founder was a shitty sci-fi author who somehow managed to scam a few hundred nutjobs into thinking he was anything more than someone who probably drank too much water from Flint, Michigan. Anyway, if you made it all the way to the end, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for watching. I grew up with The Sims 1 and The Sims 2 on the family computer in the living room, and all my sisters had all those big bulky DLC cases, and it's just been such a nostalgia trip to come back to this amazing series after all these years. Even though this is The Sims 4, it still has that same Sims charm that the OGs had. And honestly, I even considered scrapping this video several times, it's just been on hold for weeks, like I recorded this over a month ago. But I'm actually really happy I continued with it, because I can't remember the last time I had this much fun writing a script. I hope I was able to convey at least some of that through the video, and maybe give some of you a taste of what this game series has meant to me over the last few decades. With that, I'm gonna get out of here though. Until next time, I appreciate you all, stay safe, and thanks for stopping by.